Hello and welcome to my F124 driver career mode here today for round 3 of the 2025 Formula 1 season and part 21 of the career mode. But before we get into the Japanese Grand Prix weekend, we had a secret meeting with Aston Martin for a drive for 2026 of course 2026 is going to have the big engine regulation changes so we're going to continue talks Aston Martin very quick so far this season but as we come now into qualifying through the final chicane we go it hasn't been the cleanest of laps around the final kink back to the line and that first lap is going to put his P13 just behind our teammate we found seven tenths nearly on this lap to go through the Final chicane, we've had a big tank slap, we've lost three tenths in just that one corner, but we'll start the race, P12. We come to you today live from the Mai Prefecture in the south of Japan's Honshu Island for a race that has seen so many title deciders through the years, some simple, some controversial, but all contributing to a legacy that makes the Japanese Grand Prix an indispensable stop in any Formula One season. the back of a fantastic qualifying session it's time to see how our starting grid looks like for today's race world champion Max Verstappen starts from pole position and Oscar Piastri completes the front row considering the rest of the grid we have Norris Leclerc Sainz Hamilton Stroll Russell Gasly Fernando Alonso Albert Brown Sonoda Ocon Ricardo. Bottas, Joe, Perez, Hulkenberg, and Logan Sargent. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out then. Let's see who can prevail today. Welcome to the commentary box. I'm Alex Jakes. Alongside me, a real authority on all things motor racing. It's a warm welcome back to Anthony Davidson. Paddock chat earlier in the weekend that this driver had discussions with another team this week. How does that work from a driver's point of view? Now, those final hours before a race, did you have a routine? Well, for them, you know, you've got your pre-race rituals that you go through. You see different drivers uh, that, you know, some have got their headphones on, they're listening to the music. Some drivers really absorb the energy from the crowd and they're there waving to them. Other drivers, they go within themselves. They chat to their engineers, absorbing that information, that vital information that you need to carry you through the race. And, you know, those pre-race rituals are essential to making things systematic. We do a lot of Grand Prix in a season, and the more systematic you can be, the easier you are within that environment. Here we go then. The formation lap gets underway, and the excitement here is building as we near ever closer to the start of the race. Which team will come out on top? Who's got their strategies right for today's race? Well, we'll see. as all the cars reform the grid the drivers will be hoping to get a strong start they'll want to earn some valuable points from today's race with final communications being done with their race engineers ensuring their planned strategies are all in place Here we go then for the Japanese Grand Prix, the same front row as it was in Australia. It's lights out and away we go for the Japanese Grand Prix, we've had a long race for this line, but we've managed to get it alongside our teammate Albon. Going down into turn one, we've really had to throw the anchor out because we were so far caught on the inside of the track and we've lost out to Albon. Trying to go back down the inside again through their section. Alvin keeps his bit on for now. We don't we want to make contact and we'll keep it clean. We've had some good battles so far in this career mode with Albon, our teammate, as we head up towards the hairpin. The Kobe Ashley hairpin down the inside of go on Albon. Can we get the traction? No, we can't. We have to stay behind Albon and look at the back 
of this Williams so as we step on in towards the end of lap 2 we head up the hill over the track and now through the 130 hours we go we've dropped back a little bit from from our Alex if we go through this game Alex is throwing the anchor out because dear Gasly has a big lock up we have to take avoiding action he's already dropped the back end again and we've lost multiple positions we've lost out to Perez in a bad quality we've lost out to Valtteri Bottas as well in the Sauber we've dropped from P12 all the way down to P17 it's awful just to avoid contact with our teammate now over on the back of Bottas can we get him back fairly quickly that Sauber's not very quick compared to our Williams we really need to get this job done quick Going into the second Degna, we're going for a look down the inside, but we pass those on the grass. And now Nico Hulkenberg has done his round the outside as we have to struggle for the traction. Trying to gain one, we've lost one, we've dropped P18. This is the replay of what happened, and Gasly going into the final chicane locks up, loses a position, quite a few positions, loses out to his teammate, and then this is Albon who just literally just stopped and threw the anchor out trying to avoid Gasly and didn't realise that we were right behind him had to take avoiding action as we go down the inside of Hulkenberg get him back on the same lap he ever took us as a bar had gone flying across the screen there and now this is Gasly and I've gone go move to wheel Gasly gets the place back but he's locked up again at turn one Gasly's having a huge issue today, he lost multiple positions again. He's just come back up to the track just in front of, of Bottas who we are battling. And now this is Ocon. And this is us. Fending off Hulkenberg who had another go again past it but we left him behind and managed to catch the back of Bottas. Now we're going to be able to have a go down the inside into the final chicane, drop down on the sailboat. Now can we get after Pierre Gasly? In the Galpin, we haven't got the best of exits though, and that's going to allow Bottas to have a go at getting back at us. As we head down the pit straight, down into turn one, Bottas isn't quite far enough alongside to have a go and get us back into that corner. Now this is Sonoda and Ocon going with his wheel. Round the outside goes Esteban Ocon on Yuki Sonoda. Can he keep it pinned? As we go through the S section now, they're both side by side. This is a great little battle. Ocon gets his nose ahead. Sonoda though, keeping his foot in, but eventually, now he's not got the job done. Ocon looks like he finally has, as we've caught Gasly napping and got up the inside of Gasly and got the job done on on the Alpine next at the road is the Red Bull Sergio Perez he's like last season not having the best of races here and this is Albon who was in the points for oh, us just like in Australia last time out he's reversing back I don't know what he's doing there He's made a mistake when he's been in the points, just like he did last night in Australia, and now he's stone dead last. And now, either of us are in the points, as this is Sonoda getting back past Ocon. Good move by him, and the crowd really turning out today to watch him race. As now, this is Bottas, who we were battling early on, he's slowing down because Bottas' engine is popped, just like he did in Jeddah. It's two retirements in three races for Valdry Bottas. His day is done as Yuki Tsunoda locks up at the final chicane. He hands the position to Ocon. Now we're all over the back of Tsunoda. We've lost the back end trying to find the traction to get out of the corner. But that's allowed Pin Gatley to have a go at getting his back of the ass. So we're on the end of lap 10 now, going into the chicane. That was another lock up by Pin Gatley. What is going on with that Alpine's brakes today? Surely he has some kind of brake issue. That's the third lockup he's had today. Yes, this is Perez getting past Esteban Ocon. But Perez is locked up at the second corner and lost out so many lockups today. Maybe it's not just Gasly. Multiple cars locking up. 
Aaron Bonson Noda. Very interesting here today. As into the happy and Daniel Ricardo's locked up as well. Both are either in the wars with the lock up. Everyone's locking up. And he's lost some places as well. And now we're on the back of Yuki Sonoda, who on the end of lap 12 is going to pit for his one and only second of the day. We're going to carry on for an extra lap. So now this lap is about getting the hammer down, getting the pace. Can we overcut Yuki Tsunoda? As we come on towards the end of lap 13 and into the pits. We've pulled away from those behind. And we've followed in an Esteban Ocon. Gasly goes through, quite a few go through behind. Off go the medium, just a bit slow on the front and right. But on go the hards, and that's our one and only stop of the day if everything goes to plan. We trundle down the pit here now. Come back out. There is Yuki Sonoda. The overcut hasn't worked and he's actually gained quite a lot of time on us there. Has Sonoda. Ocon is behind us. And now Sonoda just got away. Big time got away. And we fell back into Esteban Ocon. He won the up. 15 goes to the inside and gets the job done as we're going to try and play later and hold it around the outside of turn one we've still got our footing we've still got our footing but eventually we have to admit defeat and Ocon is through as we battle for P12 bit disappointing after the podium in Jeddah the points we got last time out in Australia P5 or P12 is a bit disappointing as this is George Russell now on for a podium or was on for a podium because he's pulling off to retire from the Japanese Grand Prix it's all over for George Russell we skip all the way on now to lap 23 it's taken this long for us to get close enough to have a go at Esteban Ocon we were biding our time we're going to the inside we've got great straight line speed we've got Ocon before we even get to turn one it's now lap 26 we go on to and Ocon is going to have his back here Ocon gets his back this is turning into a great battle between us Ocon gets the job done we're going to have one more opportunity then to get him back really down into turn one can we get the job done as we go on to the final lap of the race but we've made a mistake we've lost the back end that we've been doing all this long that might be it in terms of finishing in p12 ahead of esteban ocon we're too far back to have a go into turn one we're gonna have to go all in here one lap to go the pressure is on now we've ruined our best opportunity to get p12 the next opportunity realistically is the hairpin for this man up front max verstappen it's another dominant display from him it's now three in a row it's three out of three for max verstappen in 2025 lando norris is going to come over p2 carlos Sainz currently on the podium but he's locked up at the final corner and handed the podium to his former teammate Charles Leclerc Ferrari get the first podium of the season after Carlos Sainz bowls it at the final chicane now this is our one and only opportunity left now surely to get up past Ocon we send it late down the inside we go all in at the hairpin now it's a traction race as we go through the kink we're side by side of Ocon it's the big just behind we're trying to keep our foot in Ocon no had the extra traction off of the hairpin and Ocon keeps it behind we've run a bit wide and now he's pulling away and that might have been it it's going to be a big ass to get in from there unless we absolutely send it at the, at the chicane but he's pulled away and that I do believe is probably that as we go into the final chicane we're too far back now we went all in on this final lap to try and get it, it didn't pay off. We're gonna come home at the P12. Another action-packed Japanese Grand Prix comes to an end then. 
and a magnificent drive to take the win today. And they're just starting to make it look easy out there. Now a hat-trick of wins. They're out there ahead, they've got the momentum on their side, and it's for the others now to try and up their game to stop that energy that they have. The drivers are en route to the podium as we speak. What a fantastic win for the Red Bull team. They've performed exceptionally today, keeping us firmly on the edge of our seats throughout the entirety of the race. Congratulations to everyone at the team. So that's been your Japanese Grand Prix and won by Max Verstappen. It's now three out of three for him in 2025. Utter dominance once again, like last time out in Australia for him. Lando Norris gets another podium, comes home for P2, and Charles Leclerc gifted the final podium place by Carlos Sainz at the final corner, with Sainz locking up, bottling his first podium for Mercedes. We just couldn't get Esteban Ocon in the end, finishing only just behind him in P12. The race will say we started P12, finished P12, but that definitely doesn't tell the full story of that race. We do beat though Alex Albon, our teammate, who really should have got points once again today, but recovered to P14 after that lockup at the hairpin, and then there was two retirements. That being George Russell and Foutry, Bottas is second DNF of the season. So Max Verstappen now has a 25 point lead over Lando Norris at the top of the Drivers World Championship with 76 points. Charles Leclerc with that podium jumps us into P4. We've dropped to P5 in the championship with just a single point ahead of Carlos Sainz. Albon, our teammate, has been jumped by Lewis Hamilton and he now has four points. Alex Albon has one and is ahead of everyone else who hasn't scored a point this season, which is quite a few drivers. In terms of the constructors, then Red Bull lead by just four points. Max really doing it on his own so far this season we have dropped from p3 to p5 being jumped by mercedes and ferrari here today and we are just ahead we're just ahead of aston martin just by two points and then there's two teams do it score that being sauber and us so that's been your japanese grand prix for 2025 it's the first time this season we haven't scored points so going into monaco next time out where we got our first win last season looking to get back to some solid point scores we'll see you then goodbye